Welcome back to War Thunder. Welcome to a very special video. Today, I give you a video with the title Gold vs. Silver. And this is the first plane, the P-47D28 American Rank 3 Battle Rating 3.7 Fighter Bomber with a huge variety of payload. Now, mine is fully upgraded and I don't use any of the payload. I use it as a fighter as you should and you would just waste the fighter potential and screw over your team. Now there are, are today two battles. I will give you first the American P-47 and then the German one, the golden one. And the main basic idea behind today's video is that I want to compare practically the same plane under two different yeah sets of surroundings let's put it that way american teams are known for all the wrong reasons they don't climb they give up they use bombers they don't work together weak weaponry although there is a huge debate going on from patch to patch sometimes 50 cals are extremely extremely overpowered one hitting even the heaviest of bombers so to speak bit exaggerating but you know what I mean and the next patch you just hammer the enemy like crazy and nothing happens and they one shot you in return and there is a very good reason because I think um, there is a very good reason why I make this video I want you to just see my experience and those were two completely let's put it that way in itself special battles both were exciting with a lot of plot twists and you know not seeing the sign on the horizon at the very beginning of the battle and the ending was kind of surprising but I don't want to spoil you anything I just want you to go with me through both battles the P-47 is considered to have a much too low battle rating with 3.7 and you know certain statistics speak for this plane it has great weapons 850 cals certainly do the job I think you don't get much more firepower than that in the American tech tree up until the uh, twin Mustang the F-82 if I'm not mistaken uh, especially with the gun pods the problem is uh, you have to always set a convergence point for wing mounted guns that severely limits your effectiveness either in close range combat or in long range engagements depend on what you use for myself I'm always trying out something between 600 meters and 400 meters I have tried out 800 meters completely useless when you do your normal attack runs and also 300 meters is kind of bizarre to use now, as you can see here, I'm in the P-47. And while I'm fully upgraded, I don't see why those people to my right don't climb. This is your perfect American team to showcase the average American team. They stick low and while they are not scattered around like usually, they also do not really stick together. Now, my playstyle is like a lone wolf. While I always recommend playing in teams, I'm guilty uh, of playing not so much in a team myself. But I know that and then I don't blame my team for it. However, in this battle you saw the combination of, um, let's put it that way, a good enemy team and a bad ally team, in my opinion. Now Russian planes for me are really, they are really dangerous opponents. They have good low altitude performance. Uh, they always can dive away from you back to low altitude where then they perform better. They can outrun you and while you might have better high altitude performance, you never get there to it to use it it's the, the the fight never occurs at six seven eight thousand meters maybe against the Germans yes or Norway this is a prime example 
Um, Norway is, in my opinion, the map where you see the most high altitude combat. Um, not just due to the air spawn, but also there is not too much to fight over. Um, and as Germans usually then are at six, seven thousand meters when you encounter them with the usual tier, let's say tier three to tier four props. Yes, there are a lot of Germans that go bomber hunting, they do their job and then they climb to re-engage the fighters that then are in dogfights with the rest of the German team. And so often German teams just come off better despite the allies having overall better planes. Now, as you just could see, my aim was not perfect, I screwed it up, but still, the Yak-3 took no serious damage. Yes, he's smoking, but he just can return to base and he can, you know, make me run after him. I would sacrifice all my altitude, I would have a, diff a difficult time to get back into the fight. Nevertheless, I tried to re-engage him and... I'm not commenting this right here. You can read the stuff in the comment section, I guess. I mentioned it in the beginning, 50 cals are... the most RNG weapon in the game, in my opinion. And the only belt that you really can use is the stealth belt. Now there is also an argument for the omnipurpose belt, where you have tracers, I might have um, equipped a different um, conversion point, but you know, I can't plan everything in advance. And this is why center lined armament is so good. And there are practically two nations that mainly focus on this the Germans and the Russians. And there you can see, very often I find myself in situations where I then will undoubtedly uh, go into head-ons. And this is where like an 800 meters convergence would be really great. And again I just got a hit into him, doing no serious damage. And another Yak-9. Now, don't get me wrong, I could avoid... Not even a hit there. See, in these situations, the flaws of the P-47s become obvious. You don't have the roll rate and the snappiness because you're a big, fat American plane, which in itself is, you know, a drawback, but the engine power supports it in the boom and zoom capabilities. And believe me, I love the P-47. The P-47 is so much better in my hands than the P-51. However, there was also the second battle afterwards that made me think to a certain point. And um, I will talk about this later. Now, as you can see, look at this. Look at the team list. There are not many of us left, just us three. And then there is three quarters of the enemy team still alive. Now, this was a perfect bait by the P-51. And I screwed it up. And uh, yeah, it's... Now that was that was purely my fault. That was bad aiming. That was bad aiming, and I can't expect from those few hits to really um, change the outcome. But the P51 went back and killed him. Nice result right there. And now we come actually in the exciting part of the combat. It is us versus the entire Russian team basically, and. Um, I heard so many stories of, of people saying, oh, the P-51 and the P-47 are so devastating when they have the advantage, and, and, and. And there you could see simply basic, basic uh, evasive maneuvers by this Yak-9 made it impossible for, impossible for me to get the shots in. There are practically two types of enemies that the P-47 is very good against. Bombers in head-ons, and people that are not aware of you. But then, however, I have to ask myself, which plane is bad in this circumstance? Which fighter plane, especially at this battle rating, is, is bad in this respect? And again, some kind of head-on. I ripped off there my flap, but it really does not 
hinder the overall performance of the plane. And I have to make it clear right here, I think the P-47 is a beautiful handling aircraft. It doesn't have any instructor interferences that really would cripple it. There is a little bit of wobbling, but I think this is due to the massive weight of the plane. And then this guy just does again a bit of rolling and I can't get my guns on him. Oh boy. And I zoom through. I try to keep my speed up, but the difference that I can make to the enemy is just not that great. And the biggest flaw of, for example, Duen Zoom Fighters overall, that includes the I-185 I or the Focke Wolves as well as some of the Japanese Boom and Zoomers, but granted they can turn fight as well. And of course the P-47 and P-51 is that when the enemy does evasive actions and you eventually overshoot him because you try to keep your speed up and he just rolls out of the way, you get up and he can follow you through. And he has enough time to eventually get a shot into you. And while this shot might not cripple you, it just might damage you to a degree where you have to return to base because engine damage or you leak fuel and or one of your control surfaces is heavily damaged. And again, simple rolling out of the way and there is nothing that I can do. Now, uh, two things that I want to mention here. First of all, the P-47 has one extreme big advantage over the P-51, which is also historically accurate, and that is taking damage. The P-47 is not that a walkover like the P-51, especially the engine. And in this respect, I think it, uh, you see one of the both most extreme um, durability difference in one tech tree ever. The P-47 engine is sturdy, it's rugged, it can take damage and it can carry on for an extended period of time. Also the overheat is very controllable. Not just with mech, but just go, from, go away from the web for a few seconds and you are back in the orange zone, which is kind of average and acceptable. <coughs> uh, jokes aside, also the, the plane itself can take massive amounts of damage in comparison. And I think the, the matter for American teams is that, that you ha have to bait, you have to really make, it, make the planes work and they have a very high skill cap in, uh, in comparison to finally in comparison to, for example, Japanese planes. Japanese planes not just are very easy to use for new players, in my opinion, when you have the basics under control, they also offer great opportunities for experienced players. Uh, letting Boom and Zoom pilots looking stupid is my specialty in the Zeros, for example. And you have so many reserves, it's... it's, it's yeah, it's, it's like an enhanced version of a Spitfire where I do the same with uh, German players. And I know the limitations of German planes because I fly them myself. I fly all the nations, all the planes, excluding jets. But you know, some from time to time I also use uh, fly some jets, but not on a regular basis. Now, what you see me trying here is to make a a turn, a very slow turn. Currently I have the speed advantage, but due to geometrical reasons, the enemy Yak-3 catches up by having lower speed even. And um, I'm running on, 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 on maximum speed practically. I try to get back the engine under control. At this point I thought to myself, should I just, you know, let it die the engine web hard? Because now he catches up while behind, while being behind me. And look at this premium P63A. Must be either an A5 or an A10. The A5 I think is there for purchase, and the A10 was a reward vehicle. And look at this. I'm on the deck. I'm flying. He just came out of a loop, and I fly away from him. I am 
faster than him. I'm in a P-47. I'm in the Chuck. I'm in one of the fastest aircraft in the game. Granted, it is more like a high altitude fighter, but look at this. Both catch up. Both catch up. This is how unforgiving American aircraft are. I tried the best. I was running for the entire time. And I was faster at certain points. Now the Yak-3 went away. But look at this King Cobra. The King Cobra is also considered to be one of those planes with a battle rating that is much too low. And that is not down to the armament. Granted the 37mm is kind of an argument but it is one of the worst weapons in the game in this respect. Slow muscle velocity and um, sparks a lot. But it's backed up by 50 cals which have decent amount of ammunition. And I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm wepping, my engine is about to, to explode. And I try to do some little evasive maneuvers to not lose that much speed. And you see the traces fly by, you see the impact in the water right in front of me. The P-51 can't help me and I'm on fire. And the P-51 crashed. Now I have to say a big shout out to this guy. Um, he, he did well. We tried to work together really well. But it was not to be. At the end we were just beaten. And it, it feels bad. It feels there is some bitter taste, you know, wrapped around my tongue when I fly American teams uh, with American teams. And, and things like this happen, where I screw up, where the team screws up, and where the team did not even try in the beginning. And this is why you always defeat, and why this plane has basically a silver paint scheme. And let's have a quick look at the result. One kill, one assist, one critical hit, just under 20,000 silver lines. And yeah, I was first in team with this bad performance. I was first in team, really? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, let's do this again. And let's do it with the German P-47. Yeah, this plane is actually just another P-47D. And let's have a quick look at the stat card. And we can see we have relatively similar, if not identical, stats to the D-28. And the major differences are that I have not access to any kind of uh, payload, so no bombs and rockets. I think the Russian one does have Russian bombs. Definitely no Russian bias. Um, I'm joking. The, Amer the Russian P-47 was lent lease. It was obviously used by the Russians also in ground strike missions and therefore it is fair enough that it does have a decent uh, bomb load but it doesn't have the same payload in its variety and size than the American P-47s do have. Again, don't use the P-47 as a ground striker at least at first. Now it gives you the option in the long run that you might decide games and for example in combined arms uh, the American P-47s can literally carry teams you can take out multiple tanks and lightly armored vehicles both with bombs, rockets and even with your machine guns. 50 cals are really good at taking out lightly armored vehicles. For example, uh, the Marder has around a battle rating where it can meet you in an up tier so to speak and you know how this will end. And look at this. We had not an air spawn but a spawn on the airfield we need to climb. Let's do this. But I'm not side climbing. No, 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 no. I'm in a German team. Let's get in. Let's get in. And this is the Golden Bolt. This is one of those planes that I played the most in realistic battles. I did not like it in arcade too much. But, you know, the difference between arcade and um, realistic is big for planes. Not so big for tanks. It's mostly down to the spawn point system and uh, how many respawns you have which certain other famous YouTubers, let's call them famous, uh, made some videos about that they actually prefer now arcade or let's be honest they give it a try and they like it. Um, 
I'm really interested how they will think about it in a few weeks after their hype. Now, and as we can see, this time the Russian teams, the Russian team is not really sticking together that much, but they're not scattered around. But they're all low. And guess where the Germans are? And there is one big difference. The Germans can end the Russians purely by far power. And I am amongst chairman players in a plane that in conjunction with chairman players is really capable of doing the job. Now again here we can see the same drawbacks, a little bit of wobbling around, not getting the shots in, into a head on, so not too much of a difference to the prior game. And I'm actually turn fighting. Now, don't get me wrong, this was literally the match afterwards and it was just a big difference in, in experience. And this time I get in the hits on the P8, I get, in, I get the hits into the I-185 and I actually kill him. I get a kill assist on the P8, fair enough, I was not the only one shooting it. I'm on the tail of a Yak-9T and he gets warmed hard by the Germans. Another A-18, another I-185 comes in, I dodge him and I turn around, keeping the pressure on him. We have the inferior planes in terms of dogfighting skills and also the Russians are superior in their um, yeah, altitude performance. In, in where we actually fight, but they just get swarmed and they are coming in one by one. I can't get guns onto him, I s yeah, take minor damage. Again, the ruggedness of the P47 saves me there. Get a kill assist on the uh, I-185, it's, it's, it's hard to pronounce uh, it in uh, quick succession. And again, I do kind of a semi-climb, you know, trying to get away from the ground, try to get another shot into this P8, he's coming into a relatively good head-on position. The P8 fears some plane when you are on its tail, but really vulnerable when you uh, can get it from the front. Pilot snipe, I like it. And you know, the glass cockpit doesn't uh, contain, let's put it that way, as much meat shield as for example American bombers, at least in my experience. And another I-185 goes down and then there is just this LA-5 visible. Just two enemies are left. This LA-5 in front of me, uh, it gets after a BF-109 and look at this, look at this, like half of our team is still alive. This was a quick, brutal, amazing match and um, I didn't screw up that much as I did in the previous game. And I made a quick semi guide about how to earn silver lines and I mentioned both the German Premium Wellington and also the German Captured P47 and I stand by this. I think those are good cheap planes. I guess both planes together cost like 15 euros? Something like this. I get another hit in the LA5FN if I'm not mistaken. I turn around and look at this. With this swarm tactic he can't really dogfight me. We, we just we just chase him down and he now has to do the evasive maneuvers that slow him down a little bit but he's still getting away from me LA5 is really an awesome plane by itself I have the German uh, premium LA5N which I won in an event I really like it I should take it out more often to be honest but I'm in love with the German P47 this match is nothing unusual. Now, I could show you numerous battles on, for example, Ruhr, where, it, where I face other P-47s and I own them, or where I, you know, just own Spitfires because they don't pay attention, and I use my speed to dive away, they try to follow, I make a turn, make a slight roll, then pull full elevator, they try to follow and rip their wings. This is how I deal with Spitfires. It kind of works the same with Focke Wolves, mm, and I have to say that the A1 Focke Wolf 
is also a very enjoyable plane at 3.7 and the Yak-90 crashes that was the last player and what you can do now is actually doing ground strike despite the high amount of shooting that I did and the high amount of missing I still have so much ammunition left this is the enjoyment of 50 cows and you know while this might not be the reason why I have over 100 million silver lines you know it's a little bit take everything with you that you can once the battle is decided and look at this oh, this was just such a good feeling to it when um, when when the battle ended prior to the disaster and I'm also first in team but now I have three kills I have three ground units I have two assists multiple other hits and I have over 104,000 silver lines and over 8,000 research points I'm first in team with 3,571 score points do you see the difference this is the usual difference in my experience and I love the German P-47 and while I have no doubt that the American uh, P-47s once fully upgraded have the same kind of performance they fight in a completely different environment they fight together with another Americans and it's not just the teams it's also the armament now as you could see the Germans really hammered the Russians hard but they had the firepower for it and uh, when you get in so many sparks you end up in in a in in a situation that is not preferable with you at the end the enemy will swarm you but when you swarm them and hammer them down you can actually turn around the tables for example the russians and there was a good reason that i showed you those two matches because they were against the same opponent but i was in a different team and this is the difference so i hope you liked the video let me know in the comment section what you think about this topic i'm really interested in a uh, discussion about this uh, am i wrong am i right are there some valuable arguments on my behalf or, or in my speech in my monologue and um, was it any helpful did you get what i tried to say let me know in the comment section and give this video a like if it did, subscribe if you want to see more and we will see each other in the skies of War Thunder.